Hello everyone, and welcome to another Daily Dose of Drupal. Today, we are on episode number 135, and we're going to continue where we left off, continuing to learn more about the Drupal Panels module. As always, I am Shane. You can follow me on Twitter at smthomas3. You can also go to CodeKarate.com, learn about the CodeKarate.com supporter program by clicking this link right here. You can also sign up for the newsletter if you haven't already. We're going to go ahead and jump right into this one today and learn a little bit more about panels contexts. And if you, you can do a little reading on the panels page about what a panels context is right here in this section. And basically, to sum it up, the panels context basically allows you to reference other types of content or objects that are within your Drupal website. So let's say, for instance, I wanted to include a specific piece of content, we'll say specific information about another node in this panel page. I can use a context to reference that node, pull in the information, and display it somewhere on this page. You can see this one, if you want, we can take a look here. And we'll go ahead and you can you can add an existing node right here through this, and that's what we did in this section here. But one thing you'll notice is you can only reference the entire node itself. You can't reference any individual piece of information about this node. So if I wanted to pull in just the node title of that node or just the images that are displayed on that node, there's no way for me to do that. I can select the build mode but I can't actually re reuse specific informations from that specific node. So I'm actually going to remove this one and that way we'll be able to start uh, with just a plain empty section over here. So I'll remove that and I'll save this. Now you'll see a few errors here that are just C tools warnings that we don't need to necessarily worry about at this point. So you can see there's a blank section here. So let's say, for instance, I wanted to pull in additional information from a node, a user, or anything else for this panel page. And just keep in mind this is just a custom panel page that we're using as an example, but you could, of course, do this with any type of panel page, whether it's a node view page or a custom page like this. And there's a section here for contexts. And there's a whole bunch of things you can select here. You could pull in, for instance, a specific comment. And you'll either have to enter in the title or the ID of this comment. And that will go ahead and open up another section in here, in your content section, for comments. And you can pull in specific information about that specific comment. You can, of course, do the same with files, nodes, users, and we'll go ahead and just start with node. We'll look at some of these other ones as well, but we'll start with the most basic one. And there's a node on this site. I think it has I think it's test cloud zoom. We'll just go ahead and pull that in. You could of course type in any title and it'll auto complete by searching through all the nodes on your site, and this is going to give us specific information about this node. So I'll go ahead and click finish, and I will click update and save. Now you can see there's a node context that's been added. You can edit it or delete it here. If I scroll down, it gives me a summary of the context. So I can use these uh, replacement patterns inside any time I have uh, custom content inside my content section. So I could pull out the node title, the node URL from this specific node. But I can also look here and see that when I add content, I now have a node section that was not here before. So I can of course select the node title here and we'll say we want it to link to the node. And I can also go ahead and say I want to show the node image and we'll just use the image formatter. It's going to look pretty big but we could of course change the image style to thumbnail. That should help. So now you can see that this node should have the title and the image showing up 
And the only reason that this is possible is because we set this context to reference this specific node. So we're able to actually pull in the fields from that node and use them wherever we want within this panel page. So now if I refresh, you can see I got the title here. This will of course link off to that node. It also shows the thumbnail because that's the image formatter that I selected for each of the images that were uploaded. So that's one way you can use context to pull in different information. We can also go ahead and look at some of the other options. So let's say we wanted to have a node add form here. We could add a context and say we want a node add form for an article. Go ahead and select that. I'll click update and save here. Now when I come into content, I'm going to go ahead and remove this one just to kind of clean things up a little bit. And I'm going to add a content here. Now if I select here, general form, and I select my context here, which is node add form, that's important. This wouldn't, of course, be here if I didn't have the node add form context. Now I click update and save. I come here, and now you, you can see it, of course, it overlaps. Could add some CSS to make sure this doesn't break past here, or I could just get rid of this middle section. But as you can see, I can now submit an article right from this page. Add the image, it has all the vertical tabs. You can see it's not necessarily laid out in the best fashion, but because I added that context to that node add form, I can now use this page to basically quick add an article. So I could, for instance, have the listing of articles over here on the right and a little quick submission or a node add form for the articles here. And as I added, the articles on the right would, of course, uh, appear and they would be listed. So I could use views and panels together to build some kind of interface for that. So that's another way you can use contexts. It's also possible to use based on the URL path that you actually are sending in, you can use context that way as well. And the reason you may want to use the URL as an actual context is so you can make things a little bit more dynamic on your page. So in this example we'll use the node ID as an example of how to instead of just pulling in as you saw in this column here the actual title and image of this one specific node we can make this dynamic so if you go to panel pa dash page slash whatever this node ID is it pulls in this information if you go to panel dash page slash a different node ID you'd get different information over here. So in this case, we can make our panel page much more dynamic. Keep in mind, of course, throughout this, I'm just throwing things in this panel page as examples. This is, of course, not, not isn't necessarily the way you would use it. It all depends on your situation. But the point is, it's very flexible to handle a bunch of different situations. So the one thing we're going to start out by doing is I'm going to come into basic here and change this panel dash page to panel dash page and then I'll do percent node. If you use a percent in front of it it means it's a required element. If you use a exclamation point in front of it which is documented right here it means it's an optional element. So I wanted the node ID to be required in this case and I'll go ahead and update and save. As soon as you do that there's another section that shows up here called arguments. Now you can basically show what you want the context to be for this argument. So we'll go ahead and click change and in this case this is a node ID. You could say if you wanted it to be an edit form for this node ID, if you wanted it to be a node type instead of a node ID for the add form, there's a whole bunch of different options here but in this case we're passing in a node ID but just keep in mind there's a whole bunch of different contexts that you can apply here. We can use node ID as a context identifier, that's fine. We'll save that. Now when we come into our panel, you'll notice there's another 
context added down here. And this is from the argument. So you can manually add contexts. You can also add a context through an argument. Now when we come into our content section, we come into our node title and change settings here. We're going to select our node ID context that we got passed in from the argument instead of the hard-coded node context that we set up earlier. Now that we have that set, I'll save it. And then actually I'll go ahead and I'll remove this original node context that's just referencing this test cloud zoom node ID. Since we want to make this dynamic, we really don't have a use for that one anymore. So we'll go ahead and remove that and save it. You'll see the context down below now just show argument one and context one. And if we come back to our panel page, you'll see that now nothing is showing up. But if I go to, we'll just find a node ID for another article. This one is 73, as you can see here. So if I go to panel dash page slash 73, you'll see that it shows the title and the image for that specific node. You can see these are just PHP notices from the C tools module. Um, obviously means that there's some kind of notice that some something's happening. It's not necessarily a huge deal. Um, in most in many cases you could hide PHP notices if it's a live site and you'll obviously want to hide errors like this from your users anyways. But just keep that in mind that you'll you may sometimes see these depending on your per version of PHP and those types of things. Um, so now you can see it is working dynamically. So if I go back and I find another article that's not 73, scroll down to this one. This one is 210. So I go to slash panel dash page slash 210. It's going to pull in this title and this image. So as you can see, it is dynamic. We can do other things with this panel page. Such as in the selection rules, we could add. You you can see now though also once contexts are added in, this is a good point to look at. You can have specific selection rules based on the node type. So if we wanted the node type to be limited to only articles, and based on of course this node ID that's getting passed in, then it, if the node type is an article, it's going to show this display. If it's something else, we could have it show a different type of display. You can also, in the URL path, add one that only shows up on panel dash page slash star. Then if we don't have that argument, it's not going to, of course, show this specific display. One other thing we'll touch on briefly is access. Access is very similar to selection rules but this just controls access to the page. So if this doesn't pass, the user will basically get an access denied or will not be able to actually access this page. So it's very similar to selection rules, the same kind of options exist, but if it doesn't make it through this check, then it won't even check which variants it should use. If it passes the access check, it'll go down into the variants through each selection rule and find the first one that it matches and show the content but it has to first, of course, make it through this access check. So that's it for this time on this episode of the Daily Dose of Drupal. We'll be back again next time, and we'll keep that next one a little shorter, and we'll just go over a little bit more on contexts, but what this relationship section is, and how you can use that. In, in our case, we'll use the Entity Reference Module and go through that and how it can be used to build relationships between nodes. But that's it for now. Until next time, thanks for watching the Daily Dose of Drupal. See you later.